the last, last speech of this morning is Professor Boyan Sirakov from University from PUC, Pontifícia Universidade Católica, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Good morning to everyone. No, it's it's I that I should thank you. It's an excellent, excellent initiative to organize this conference. And uh, I'm also very thankful to, to be invited to it. So, yeah, I would like to report on a joint work with Philippe Souplet from uh, University of Paris Nord in, uh, in France. Uh, it's uh, work we finished a few months ago and uh, will be published this year. So it concerns uh, a new method for proving uh, strong maximum principles or qualitative properties of um, solutions of two types of elliptic PDEs. And in particular, the so-called Vasquez maximum principle and uh, the Landis conjecture. So I'm going to tell you about these things or at least part of it. And uh, I assume that uh, yeah, this is, this is a large audience and probably most of the participants do not specifically work on these types of problems. So I will try to keep it adapted to a large audience and uh, of, uh, PDE specialists, but not necessarily uh, people who are interested in elliptic PD, in theory of elliptic PDEs. Okay, so, well, to, to, to make a setup, uh, imagine we have a real value uniformly elliptic second order operator, which might be in a divergence form or non divergence form. These are the general forms of linear operators that theory considers. Now we are going to think of linear operators in this talk. Uh, of course, they are modeled on the Laplacian. Although we may have uh, much more general things such as Hamilton, Jacobi, uh, Jacobi, Bellman operators from control theory. For instance, uh, Pucci operators for those of you who may know what it is. But let's think of uh, linear operators and uh, for the sake of uh, further reference, uh, we are going to remember that that is usual as usual in the literature, second order coefficients will be denoted by A, first order coefficients will be denoted by B, and zero order coefficient in our, in our uh, linear operator will be a C, right? And also we are going to think of weak solutions of equations that we write, uh, weak here meaning uh, weak in the Sobolev sense if we have a divergence from operators, and weak in the viscosity sense in the case when we have uh, non-divergence from operators. Right. Okay, so next, well, assumptions on these coefficients. So we make the usual assumption of uniform ellipticity on the second order coefficients. That is the matrix A is bounded and uniformly positive. It has to be also continuous if we take a non-divergence form operator. And we are going to assume that the lower order coefficients, these Bs and Cs, belong locally to Lebesgue spaces which are the optimal Lebesgue spaces such that such operators may satisfy the maximum principle in general and uh, its extension in forms of uh, generalized form or the Harnack inequality, which in this, uh, which here means that the first order coefficients are LQ log for some Q bigger than their dimension and the zero order coefficients are LP log for some P which is bigger than n over two for the divergence case and is bigger than a constant which is somewhere between n over two and n. It is defined implicitly for the non-divergence case, the so-called Escoriaza constant. In any case, our coefficients in our n are okay. Right, so that's the that's our setting. And well, let's recall a result that we, we study in the first uh, in the first PDE course, the so-called strong maximum principle. This is really a fundamental result. And it, and it says, if we have a, say, non-negative super solution of our equation, so this thing over here, and it vanishes in one point, that is, it attains a minimum somewhere, then it vanishes, vanishes everywhere, which is written over here. Another form of uh, this, uh, this same thing is to say that if a subsolution of a given equation even with the right-hand side, 
touches a super solution from below, then these two coincide. Okay, so actually this 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 is a really very important result in the regularity theory for elliptic and parabolic equations in general. Okay, and well, uh, fact that was that that later played important role in uh, studying nonlinear equations, and which was discovered by Vasquez in 1984, is that we do not need to have a zero order dependence, that is this C times U uh, in the operator. It doesn't need to be exactly C times U. It may be even non Lipschitz as a dependence of the function U. That is, we may have an equation with F of U instead of C times U and say here with a Laplacian, and then for some non-Lipschitz f, we still have the same result. That is, the strong maximum principle is not a linear result, actually. You may have a non-linear functions which are a little worse than it linear, and still it is true that super solutions which attain a minimum are constants. Okay, so a bit more on that now. What to, to, to build up a little bit on this uh, on this statement that super solutions that uh, that, that Vasquez uh, masking maximum principle, let's let's look a little bit at the strong maximum principle per se. First, the strong maximum principle for concave functions is something very trivial. If you have a concave function which attains a minimum, of course it is a constant. Right. So now in elliptic PDs, many things that are valid for convex and convex concave functions actually keep being valid for solutions of equations that have a similar property. For instance, if instead of supposing that the function is concave, that is its second derivative is negative, we just assume that the trace of the second negative, the second derivative, that is the Laplacian, is still negative, then the same property holds. This is the strong maximum principle in its most classical form. Right, and it says uh, that the sum of the second derivatives is negative. This means that there is more concavity in some directions than there is convexity in others. This is still true to infer that a function that attains a minimum is a constant. That's the, str the strong maximum principle just for the, for the Laplace equation. Okay, now put in, uh, put in zero order terms or first and zero order terms means that you essentially compare the second order term with some terms in u and gradient of u. For instance, just if we think of a zero order term, let's say the strong maximum principle still tells you that you don't need to compare the Laplacian with zero, even if the Laplacian is just below the function itself and that function is positive but attains a minimum, then the strong maximum principle still tells you the function is constant. That is, you cannot put, you cannot take a positive function that attains a minimum zero and put under it its Laplacian, its trace of the second derivative. This doesn't exist apart from constants. Okay, and now one may wonder, and can I do better in this U here? And in terms of powers, this is not possible, as it's very simple to see, very simple to see. If you take another power instead of u, which is bigger, since u is small here, it means a power smaller than one, then the strong maximum principle is no longer true. And there is a very simple counterexample. This function solves even the equation here for p small equals more than one, even with equality. And of course it vanishes at zero, but it's not uniform, identical with zero. So there's really the power one here is the optimal power. Okay, but what Vasquez discovered is that actually the threshold for the, this property is strictly between the power one and powers more than one. And what he proved is that if we have uh, inequality like that and a function which attains a minimum zero, which satisfies it, then it is identically zero provided an integral condition on this function f here of holds. And it says that the one over square root of the primitive of this f has to be divergent at zero. Yeah, for us, of course, if f is linear, then the primitive is f is a square. And so square root of f square is one. This is one over s here in the linear case. But you may have better under this condition. And the main example 
which is the type of function that have already been encountered in the applications of this result, is that you may have a function which is no Lipschitz and behaves like s times log s to a power which is up to two. This is exactly up to two means uh, this thing here is over divergence for such a function here, right? Well, for people that may know a little bit of theory, this also reminds you of the so-called keller rosserman conditions for existence of entire solutions. But then you have an integral at infinity. So it's related in form, but not exactly as a result per se. Yeah, so that's the Vasquez theorem. And since this result, there's been for the last uh, 35 years, a huge work on extending this strong maximum principle to first of applying it to various problems, but also extending it to weak solutions and more general equations than this one here, to equations that are quasi-linear, fully non-linear, also to single degenerate like the P of Russia elliptic operators. And there is a lot of, there's been a series of papers in a book essentially dedicated to this result by Patrizia Pucci and James Serin called the maximum principle. And it gives very, very general uh, results for divergence from operators, including singular and degenerate ones. And uh, among other things, they also show the integral condition. We are going to call this thing here, the integral condition is uh, necessary apart from being sufficient for the strong maximum principle. And that uh, the non-decreasing hypothesis that Vasquez had on the function here is actually necessary only in a right neighborhood of zero. And it even can be removed in some cases. Okay, fully nonlinear operators were considered in works by Felma, Montenegro and Quas, and Felma, Quas and myself later. Well, uh, essential remark which actually leads to our work is that all previous works, all these, were, all these results I'm quoting and others, require operators that have bounded coefficients. That is, these b's and c's have to be bounded. And that's really because of the method of proof that's been used everywhere. So let's recall that proof. Let's recall the proof which we essentially teach students in a first year course. Uh, not first year course, I mean uh, in an introductory PDE course. How do we prove the strong maximum principle? First, we prove the weak maximum, the comparison principle for the operator with, say, uh, uh, right uh, sign of the zero order coefficient. Then, okay, then that's an essential part of the proof. Then we uh, construct a radio subsolution or even a solution for a portion. This could be the variation of the fundamental solution in an annulus, which takes different values on the two boundaries of an annulus. And its normal derivative of this radio subsolution is not, doesn't vanish on the boundary of the, of the annulus. So using comparison with such a radio subsolution, you may deduce the hopf lemma, which tells you that on a boundary, a function that attains a maximum has a non-zero derivative. And then, you can deduce the strong maximum principle by a contradiction argument, combining this hopf lemma with a argument of continuity connectedness. This is the classical proof of the strong maximum principle. Okay, and actually, when you try to extend it to operators with non-linearities that are no Lipschitz, you see that actually this Vasquez integral condition appears in the strip two, where you construct a subsolution. Right, because in that, in that step, you solve an ODE. For instance, if the initial equation is this one, let's say just, uh, just one coefficient here, what do you do to get the subsolution of this equation, which is radial and has values on the boundary of a venue and doesn't have a vanishing derivative there? You take the minimum of B and you solve the resulting equation, which now has uh, no dependence in X, and you can search for radial solutions of such an equation. And actually you prove that such a, the, the corresponding boundary value problem for the ODE that comes from the radial solutions of this has a derivative which does not precise, which does not vanish on the extremal point of the integrable is precisely under the integral condition on F. So that's how you see the Vasquez integral condition appear. And now, if you have a coefficient here which is not bounded, 
then of course you cannot do that. This is this would be infinity here. And so up to date, there has been no Vasquez type strong maximum principle for operators with unbounded coefficients. And that's what we study with uh, Philippe Souplet. And we answer that open question for nonlinearities as in the main example. So the precise theorem falls. So if we have any sort of operator, be it in divergence or non-divergence form, and the super solution of such an inequality, where f does not blow up as zero worse as this function, that is if the derivative of f is no worse as walk west to the square at zero, then the strong maximum principle holds. I have put here essentially infimum because such a super solution may be only so worth maybe only an h1 function, but essentially if it's a continuous function, this means if u vanishes somewhere, then u vanishes everywhere. That is the strong maximum principle holds, right? So this settles the question for nonlinearities as in the main, which are the nonlinearities that appear in applications. So where did actually this come from? Uh, we have one application of that, and that's how we realized that's how I realized that uh, this problem actually was open, is when studying equations, I mean, boundary value problem for equations with a quadratic dependence in the gradients. That is, imagine some linear operators and you add a quadratic term and you work for it and you look at the Dirichlet problem for such things. These problems are not easy to study, they have been they have been a huge amount of work on this, in particular for the coercive case that when this C has a good sign, I've quoted a few people who have contributed a lot to these type of problems, and also when C has a bad sign, this is more recent, we've been studying it, and also uh, there are people who have uh, worked on that recently. And in particular, in the non-divergence case, we obtained results for non-coercive operators with my former students, Gabriele Norbank, uh, as a part of her thesis. And in particular, we realized that, at least we couldn't find another way, uh, crucial a priori bound for solutions of such equation hinges on the existence of a strong maximum principle for this inequality. And you see here, we find exactly of the time u log u to a power smaller than two. And since a few years ago when we did this, we did not know how to prove a strong maximum principle for such an equation with unbounded, sorry, uh, with unbounded coefficients here in C. We had to restrict all our work to equations with bounded coefficients, which is not natural. So this result with supply we're having now actually extends, for instance, all these works to the most general and natural framework with operations with only operators with only integrable coefficients. So that's uh, that's one application where you see really the necessity of a strong maximum principle of a Vasquez type. Well, once more the theorem to recall what it says, right? One remark is that the method of proof is completely unaware of any monotonicity assumption on F, so we remove it completely. It's another, it's another um, gain from the approach used, to which I'm coming up now. And of course, here we should put, a, obviously appears an open problem, which is okay. For bounded coefficients, we know that the result is true under the Vasquez integral hypothesis, which is a hypothesis on the primitive of this function f of u here, which of course is obviously satisfied if under this hypothesis, I mean a function s log s square has a primitive which is not integrable at zero. But can we extend this result here to the, to the whole integral hypothesis? We don't know. For instance, we don't know if we can take s log s log log s, okay? Of course, we don't know of any application of that either, but uh, it is just curious. It's not clear because this integral hypothesis works like quite an ODE hypothesis. Okay, so now how do we approach the problem? We devise a new method which uses the Harnack inequality, more exactly the weak Harnack inequality, to which I'm going to recall now, 
And what we do is that we realize that it can be used to prove a maximum principle of Lasky's type, provided we optimize the constant in that inequality with respect to the domain and the norms of the coefficient of the operator. Okay, so for those who don't remember the Harnack inequality, in particular the weak Harnack inequality, here it is in its classical form. It tells you that if you have a positive super solution of an equation in some domain, say a ball of radius r cross one, then in a compact subdomain, say the ball of radius r, you can bound some uh, integral of your super solution with the minimum of the super solution times a constant. And here there are two constants, this epsilon, which depends only on the dimension and the ellipticity in case we have operators in non-divergence form. In, a non -diver in the divergence case, epsilon can be taken anything up to n over n minus two. And this constant here, CWH, we Karnak, depends of course on the dimension, on the P and Q, where P and Q are the spaces where I leave the coefficient of B and C, the ellipticity, and again, and above all, of norms of these coefficients of first order, zero order, and also the size of this domain here, okay? And this is, with, uh, this, uh, the, with respect to this quantity, we, need, we are going to optimize that constant over here. But okay. Need you. okay. I on? guess this, I'm getting some technical announcements in my. Yes. Okay. Never mind. So let me continue. Uh, yeah. So this result is really a fundamental result in regularity theory of for elliptic PDEs. In the <coughs> non-divergence, in the divergence case, it goes back to the George and Moser. And in the generality, I'm giving it here, it's due to Trudinger. And in, for non-divergence form operations, operators, it goes back to Kriwov and Safonov, and also Caffarelli. And in the, the, uh, the generality, I'm giving it here, it's due to Koike and Switch. So this result is a quantifier of the strong maximum principle. Of course, it tells you that if u is zero at one point, then u is zero everywhere, right? Uh, but it's also, it, it quantifies it in the sense that it is a growth lemma, in the sense that if you know that there is just a part of your domain of positive measure where your function is bigger than some positive constant, then it is bigger than a positive constant, another positive constant, everywhere. Yeah? This is what's called, usually known as a growth lemma. And it implies the whole regularity of solutions of equations. This is uh, fundamental observation about this result. Okay, the same result has also a no inhomogeneous version. When you have a right-hand side in the equality, then you need to put also some norm of the right-hand side and you still have an inequality of this, of this sort. All right, so we would like to optimize here with respect this constant, right? And also we need to optimize the dependence here, which should not be expected to be in the whole ball but also vocally on both of radius one inside here, right? Uh, the, in, in the literature, usually this result is given uh, by rescaling from a ball of radius one to a ball of radius r. And here you have a ball of radius two r, for instance. We need to make that more precise and also optimize this constant here with respect to these quantities in the right way. Okay, so let me give you this optimization first. We use so-called uniformly local Lebesgue spaces, which are pretty used in the theory of parabolic PDEs. For instance, it works of Cato and Ginebra and Velo, they, they have appeared. We just uh, call a uniformly local norm of a function, the supremum of the norms that you take crossing your domain with any ball of radius one. You see, you just measure the function locally. You don't care about the size of the domain. And then we introduce the following quantity here. We take uh, A to be essentially the norm of uh, the coefficient B in uniformly locally LQ, depending on the Q that you assume your B to be. And same for C to some powers which are given here. 
1 over 1 minus n over q, 1 over 2 minus n over p here. And these powers are just 1, beta is 1 in case of bounded coefficients and 1 half in case of bounded coefficients. Okay, so that's that quantity being given. We are able to prove that the constant in the weak Harnack inequality is something which behaves like an exponential of a uniform of a uniform constant times this quantity here times the size of the bow you're taking. And this is really optimal. I mean, the optimality is clear. I mean, the optimality is simple. You can just see it with an ODE. You take just say this ODE, you see that. Uh, the function grows exactly like this. What's difficult is to prove that for any PDE, the constant is no worse than that. And that's uh, one thing we show. Okay, now once we have that, once we have that, we realize that we may apply it. This is also, this is where the new approach comes in to prove the strong maximum principle of Vasquez type. Okay, but uh, a few more observation of uh, how would one proves this thing over here. It's actually not very complicated. First, we have also version for non-homogeneous, inhomogeneous operators, right? Where we also find a local norm of the right-hand side in the right-hand side of the weak Harnack inequality. So the idea of proof is, okay, I cannot do it, but let me give just an idea. If you take a ball of size one over a, rescale it to a ball of size one, you find a new operator that has coefficients with not so more than one. And that rescaled operator, you apply the usual Harnack inequality. Then you scale back, you do a covering with overlapping balls, you use a Harnack chain, which needs to be carefully optimized with respect to the geometry of the domain, and you essentially end up with that. Also, we have a local maximum principle. That is a result for the opposite inequality over here, which now says that the maximum of your function is, uh, is controlled by some L epsilon norm of this sort here. And we find that here, actually, the dependency not exponential in A, it's even just power. It's uh, algebraic in A. When you put these two together, you get the full Harnack inequality, right? For solutions of such equations supreme bounded by the infimum. Well, once we have the weak Harnack inequality in this form, the proof, uh, well, there's some work to do, but the proof essentially of the, of the strong maximum principle essentially is like that. You write your equation and you think of such a term log u to some power as a part of the zero order coefficient. You cannot exactly do that because you don't know in which space, if this is in some LP space and in general it is not. You cannot hope that around the point where you vanishes. But imagining it's like that and writing this in inequality, you realize that on the right hand side here, there is a zero, you vanishes somewhere, multiplied by infinity because this thing over here is some infinity, this A is infinity, but you can essentially compare this infinity to this zero here. And see that this indetermination is solved in favor of the zero, provided you have this log of u to power up to two. That's, that's essentially the idea of the proof. Okay, so that's, uh, that ends the part. Uh, yeah, maybe one more open question is that, uh, we prove strong maximum principle for the nonlinear operator by using weak Harnack inequality with an optimized constant for the linear equation. One would wonder, wouldn't there be a weak Harnack inequality directly for the nonlinear inequality, or at least for inequality? This is a hard question, and it was answered a few years ago by Vesey Yulin. In a very particular case, divergence from operators, no first order terms, no zero order terms, and really solutions, no, no super solutions, but then you have an exact uh, strong maximum principle, even a Harnack inequality expressed in terms of the operator of the primitive of one over square root of the primitive of F. It's a difficult proof and it's not clear if it can be extended. This is another open question. Can such a thing be proved for more general operators? or for any operators that are in non-divergence form. This is really a divergence structure result. 
Yeah, so, well, I still have maybe a seven minutes, so I may just tell you about the second uh, second problem we consider and we managed to give some results through optimized uh, weak Harnack inequality. This is not so well known open question of uh, about uh, again 35 years ago but this has been very extensively studied and it's incredible because it's a very very simple question. See you just take the Schrodinger type operator just for Poisson plus uh, potential which is bounded and take solutions of this very simple equation in an exterior domain in Rn. Is it true that they cannot decay super exponentially, super exponentially at infinity? In other words, can you find a constant dependence say on the bounds for this potential here, such that if u decays more quickly than exponential minus cx, then u has to be zero. And this question, even if it's been studied by, you'll see a few names after that, it's still open for real conditions. Yeah, it looks simple, but it's still open for real solutions. Uh, okay, there have been also some variants of these questions, some specifications. One may ask, and what if the solution is given in the whole space Rn, not just in an exterior domain? Is this at least, is this true? It is also still open. There's a weaker conjecture due to Carlos Koenig. And what if the solution decay not exactly as an exponential of minus cx, but exponential of a power of x minus power of x bigger than one. This is also still open for n bigger than two and is being solved this year for n equal than two. And of course, what's happening if you take more general operators than the proportion? Well, a few years after Kondratiev and Landes asked their question, they asked it for actually complex solutions and complex here, here. It was found that in the complex case, surprisingly, the conjecture is false, not just false, but the optimal rate of decay is exponential of minus x to a different power, four thirds. And this, there's been also a lot of developments in that line by Burgan, Koenig, Scoriaza, Pons, Vega, and students of them, uh, based on Kalleman type estimates which do not distinguish between real and complex solutions. So the real conjecture is hopeless to be proved by such techniques. So the case of real solution in real C still is open through that. There's been developments, there's been developments. Uh, in particular for the last five years, starting by work by Carlos Kenning with Silvestre Wang in 2015, which considered the two dimensions, equations in divergence form, they prove some result under essentially some hypothesis that imply that the operator, which is in divergence form, satisfies the maximum principle on bounded subdomains. Essentially, they prove results of the case, which looks like exponential of minus r log r, or r log r squared in exterior domains of r2. And this result, this paper brought a number of generalization uh, Luca Rossi very recently proved that studied this problem in the non-divergence case and proved that for operator with bounded coefficients again again this thing about bounded coefficients that the uh, conjecture holds provided again this hypothesis on L having coefficient which makes it satisfy the maximum principle holds and here the bounding coefficients are strongly used to have that an exponential, a negative exponential is subsolution. This is true only for bounding coefficients. And a very strong and complicated work by Logan of Maliniko and Nadirashvili and Nazarov, which is still, uh, which was uh, posted in the last year, proves that the Kenix form of the conjecture is valid in R2. And this uses R2 quasi conformal mappings to prove that the decay cannot be worse than that. See, such a simple equation and such a complex answers. Yeah, uh, so, well, our contribution is to prove it in any dimension for any kind of operator, including fully nonlinear any kind, and any unbounded world order coefficients, keeping that hypothesis that the maximum principle holds in any bounded subdomains, right? So this hypothesis is, to date does not appear only in this work, in this preprint. 
in all other previous works. There's uh, this hypothesis and we essentially generalize these works to the best possible situation in terms of the coefficients and generality of the operator. Yeah, so uh, here's, a, here's a theorem, a specific theorem. So if you have a, a, an assumption on the maximum principle and a solution of an equation which vanishes on the bound, which has a sign on the boundary if the boundary is not empty, then we can precisely quantify even, we can even, we, we prove the one this conjecture and we quantify the decay which it may have in terms of the first and zero order coefficients. Okay. Right. And yeah, to just to, to conclude, uh, we in this work we have present an approach that unifies the treatment of these two classical problems that have never been considered together. And it has the, the advantages that it gives answers for operators with even locally unbounded coefficients in a number of situations where all previous results required bounded ingredients. For the one, this conjecture, it even extends many results for bounded ingredients and actually for the first time proves one this conjecture for fully nonlinear operators. And it has the advantage that it can treat simultaneously equations in divergence and non-divergence from, since it actually depends on the Harnack inequality, which is valid for both cases. And it provides also rather short proofs, right? Once more, the main ingredient of the proof being the weak Harnack inequality with optimal dependence of the constant in the lower order the terms in the size of the domain. I think this is just the time to say thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Boyan, for your nice talk. Do you have any questions or comments to Professor? First of all, yeah. thank you very much, Professor Boyan, for this nice talk. I have a question, maybe a silly question, but what do you know about the, the, the full nonlinear obstacle problem? Do you have this kind of estimates across boundary or not? Or Obstacle problem? Well, in the obstacle problem, I no, don't know. No, the fully linear obstacle problem, right? Okay, but yeah, I actually do not know if, uh, for instance, strong maximum principle of Vasquez type have played any role in this type of obstacle problems. Yeah, so I cannot, I cannot say immediately, I am sorry, I cannot say immediately if there is a direct application to the fully nonlinear obstacle problem. It's an interesting question in itself, but uh, I do not know. It's not, it's a, it's a good question, but I don't have an answer. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So let's thank Professor Sedakov again. Thank you very much for a nice talk. Thank you very much too.